Hello, friend. Happy Friday. It's Pat Sloan here for my daily video. And as always, on Friday, I have to do some sort of a UFO update. Unfinished objects, unfinished projects, the UFOs. That is our topic today on the daily topic. Uh, so I went and counted how many projects, how many quilts I need binding for that are not, you know, that are already quilted. All they need is the binding and the label and they're done. So how many are that? 14, which is a lot less than 800, which is my magical word. Everything is 800, 800 this, 800 that. That's my exaggerated number. Occasionally one of you thinks that I actually mean 800. It's like, no, 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 no. That's just a way to say a million. I say 800. <laughs> so I have 14 bindings. Uh, so I am going to focus on those. I have not counted, usually like once, you know, I did this new gallery, so I'll, I'll keep linking that. So if you didn't get a chance to go over and see the gallery, I'm trying to get that back into place. Uh, so that's one of my UFOs is booting that gallery back up again. But I generally like will count UFOs at the beginning of the year, and I've been really bad about sort of tracking them during the year. So that's something I want to change. Uh, I say that all the time, but at least I'm saying it this time in September and not January. <laughs> I think that's good. So I haven't counted like how many tops I have. Uh, they're, they're pretty contained. They're all in the one sort of area and a couple of spots, uh, which is not good that they're in a couple of spots, but <laughs> that's the way it is. And that's why I have the Dear Jane that what's well, hanging over there now, but uh, you want to see it, the Dear Jane? You saw it the other day. Um, I have to swing you, swing you around to the other side. There's the Dear Jane. So it is hang, pinned up there because I got the backing done so I could send it to the spa. And then now I just need to get the, um, the binding cut. That's my goal. So put the binding cut, put it in the bag with the other fabric right now that I'm sure why I'm keeping, but I don't want to get rid of it. <laughs> and it was with that top and then put that where I've put all the binding now, because if I don't do that before I send it to the spa, then who knows what will happen afterwards. I have not made UFO, current UFO in the making. I have not finished uh, the borders on Miss Barbie yet. So she's still hanging up there. So the room it may look like this for days still. <laughs> it's like I just get these things pinned up there until they're, you know, like reminding me, you got to do these. All right. So my UFOs are to do a binding and I'm probably going to do my fall Halloween-ish uh, layer cake quilt that we're doing. I think that, you know, so Monday will be our next week of that. And I think that'll be one that I can get the binding on. And it is, uh, it's actually stacked on that chair by my tiara. So it's stacked there. So we have a few things today besides UFO Friday uh, for our topic is today kicks off the socialites sew along. And that is a sort of a, a long term once a week block that the fat quarter shop is running. And so here is the first block called harmony. And I'm doing this all with my Morrison park fabric. So here is the, blue, a blue and, a, and the cream, the background cream uh, in Morrison Park. So the, I'll link you below to the Socialites web, um, my project page for the Socialites. So you'll be able to get the blocks. Uh, I don't know when, what time, the, I tape this and it runs, you know, 7.15 a.m. And I know the blocks will not be up at 7.15. So just come back to my website later and I'll have the, the block once they have released it at the Fat Quarter Shop. So I, I don't know what time that'll be. Probably, you know, it's just a, not that much longer after you're here. And probably a lot of you are going to get it right away because you're not watching this early. So <laughs> we also finish up Bring Home the Tree from the Vintage Christmas book today. And I asked Mr. Greg to hang it back up again. And the next time I hang it will be in my living room for, uh, Christmas. So I'll hang it above the couch, but it is here today to show you. And I got the binding on. That's the binding I did the other day when I figured out I have to wear my brace in order to do binding because it's too hard on my hands, but I did the red binding. So if you are working on this or working on the table runner, uh, you know, just doing a table runner for yourself, 
get it done work on it uh, today would be a good the, the next this next week would be really good to finish that up because then if you'll have time to quilt it in order to enjoy it for the um, December holidays like if if you our family the day after Thanksgiving was when Christmas decorating happened so the day after Thanksgiving so I don't know if your family likes to decorate prior to Thanksgiving uh, I still am you know pretty much I like to enjoy Thanksgiving I don't want to rush it uh, so it won't go up it'll go up probably I'll probably do that the day after Thanksgiving this year all right I want to go back to the cross stitch and show you what I ended up with. Um, oh, wait, 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 before we do that, before we do that, the spools, I haven't showed you spools all week. Today's the 25th, so that means five spools. I have, I think I showed you, I showed you, whoops, I showed you this one sewn, but I showed the, the fabrics, but here's what I ended up for my fifth row. So here we go, da 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 da, -da the fifth row. And I there see there's a Mickey fabric, isn't that cute? These are other older fabrics, <laughs> so so this will get sewn on, and then I have one more row. Uh, so I I found that having the last well since the pandemic, when did I start doing this block? Uh, this I think in in March. Did we do it in March or was it April? The stay at home was the first one, uh, and. I find that it's nice to have something that I can totally control. You know, I can decide to make these each day. I can decide to make a couple. I mean, it is just, and, and it has an end goal of the end of the month. So doing this for, you know, one month, um, I just have found it incredibly wonderful. Also to be able to play around with the fabric. Each time I'm using some different kinds. We did a rainbow. Um, we did the scrappy stars, which was me. I didn't have, I couldn't really sew. So I was using my scrappy stars that I had done and my friend cut all the sashing, but still I was, had control over what I could do. Uh, and I really like it. I think it's a way to play with my fabrics that I own. I go digging in, looking for things. I mean, it's so fun to actually cut. This is the first time I've cut anything from this fat piece of fabric I had that Denise Schmidt from Katie's jump rope. It's very old. It was a coveted line when it came out. <laughs> and I, I never cut a piece out of it. I'm like, you know, you have this fabric so long and you don't even use it and enjoy it. That's craziness. So I like doing these. So we'll probably do another really simple one in uh, whatever, whatever next month is. <laughs> I'm just like, I'm sorry. It's like Groundhog Day. Uh, October, right? I think it's October next month. It's like, yeah. Okay, that's when I'll do another one. Let's look at the cross stitch. So this is what I ended up with. Ta-da! I made a little quilt, and here is the back, and I'm hanging it on the little holder. Uh, so I want to uh, talk about a few things, because what's really awesome is that there are a lot of ways to accomplish the same ending. You know, you can get to this with a lot of different techniques, to a little mini quilt with a lot of different techniques. And so when I was talking yesterday, uh, video about trimming the, trimming off the cross stitch uh, material, and then just carefully putting the, the, the border fabrics on it, just carefully sewing this on. A lot of people on the premiere part, which is where we chat in the morning uh, during the video, there's a premiere and we, and we just chat. And a lot of people are like, oh, you need to, you need to zigzag that edge. And I, I wasn't wanting to do that for a couple reasons, um, which I'm gonna tell you. And then I decided, well, you know, you learn new things by actually trying. So I thought I would just cut, I'd take one of these strips that I had cut off and I would zigzag and I would see whether I thought that was a good thing. Because this is a very open weave and we are talking about zigzagging four sides of a five and a half inch square. So we're gonna zigzag it after I've trimmed the cross stitch out, you know, this cross stitch here. And that means this fabric is really delicate at that point. And I didn't feel comfortable doing the zigzag because I thought it would one, distort it, uh, or two, snag it. Because it could snag this 
weave, this really open weave of the cross stitch. See the cross stitch weave, if you've not cross stitched for a long time, it is a really open weave and it frays, see here? I mean it frays, that's why people when they're stitching they will, they will zigzag the edge because otherwise this stuff comes off all over the place. So here is my sample and I'm gonna show you what happened. I zigzagged the edge and you see this? Great big snag happened while I was zigzagging because the needle, when it's doing the zigzag back and forth, it grabbed one of those wo woven strip, you know, w one of the pieces of the fibers and pulled it just a little bit too much. And because this is such an open weave and those threads pull so easily, it snagged the cross stitch. Now, if I had done the actual stitch piece, that snag would have been in the stitch piece. And I probably can take it and smooth it out some but I just don't feel that it's, it was necessary to do this edge because let me show you what it looks like uh, bef when you put it into the, the border. So here the borders are on it and I have a full quarter inch there. Now is this <clears throat> um, background, is this cloth, is Ada cloth going to fray a quarter of an inch after I turn this and make it into the quilt? I don't think it will. I don't think that there's going to be enough pressure or, or twisting of it to make four sides of it fray out or even one side of it fray out as long as I've got that good quarter, quarter inch. Now when I sewed this, this is what I didn't show you, so this is a two, two part example. <laughs> if I was like super coordinated and doing all these camera angles, I'd do it all in one video, but this is a sit and chat. So just like if you came to a you know, sitting meeting with your friends, they get to a certain point, then it's time to go home. You don't get to see the next part till the next day. That's here, that's, that's my game. So I stitched around it. You can see here, I started and stopped and left this opening at the bottom. And this is where it gets turned. There, see? So the cross stitch is to right sides to the back backing. And then, I guess we can come down here. And then I will, oh, I gotta do this. I have to, <clears throat> let's see, come in a little closer. I want to trim the corners. You know, let's trim the corners off so that, the, the, that they are less bulky when I push, point, you know, push them out. This is like making a pillow. If you've never made a pillow, this is, well, this is what it is, right sides together. Now I have the fused fleece back here. So I'm turning this and when I go like, I would just use my, my thumbs and yes, this is not so easy for me, but I've got a bit of dexterity now to do this a little bit. So I would pull this out and then what I have is like a, a turner. You could use a chopstick. Okay, and then I will take that and poke all the corners. So I'm just, I'm not doing that all right now, but this is what I take. This is like a chopstick. This actually came with uh, a bag of uh, stuff for stuffing pillows years ago, came in the bag. So then I would push the corners out. And then after that, I would end up, whoops, whoop. So push the corner out, and then I will end up top stitching, which you can see on here. See the top stitching? And then I also did a second row of stitching right in here, which is catching the seam allowance with the Ada cloth. So I don't think my Ada cloth is going to fray. I think it will be just fine. Uh, and I have then not manipulated it. I've not run it all four sides of it through my sewing machine and put a zigzag and had the potential of snagging it. I just couldn't believe it when I snagged it. I did two different tests. So one of them snagged. That's a 50-50. I thought, you know, you don't want to snag your finished work after you spent all that time doing the pretty cross stitch. So here I am. I'm just sort of using my finger to poke. I'll use the poker then. So this will get all poked out the corners. I will press this under, you know, that opening. I will press it in and it will get closed down. You can do it by hand, but I don't need to. I can, it's just going to get closed up when I, when I top stitch around it. So I'll top stitch and then I'll go inside this inner part. Whoops. 
the inner part and top stitch there. You see, there's the third one. Now I haven't done the fourth one yet. I mean, I've, I've, I haven't done the first one yet <laughs> with the pretty border because that's going to get regular binding on it because it has the lacy uh, stitching on it. Okay, UFO Friday, you have uh, something to go count. Go see if you've got some bindings, see how many tops you have, pick something to work on, one of those. And also, if you have not been over to Quilt Along with Pat Sloan, come see all the amazing going on a picnic quilts that are finishing. A lot of you have actually put your tops together. A bunch of you have been asking questions like, do you like this sashing or that sashing or this border or that border? So it's been a super uh, fun to see all of those come together. So if you've not subscribed, do that. All the links I've talked about are below. I love you. Thank you for being here. Mwah. See you online.